Content warning for Oscar Wilde. So much Oscar Wilde. Hello everybody, I'm Roxy, this is Rex Vias, and today I bring you my October slash Victober TBR, which are essentially the same thing. Before I get to that, however, I just want to say that I know I haven't filled my Women in Translation Month wrap-up or my The History Challenge wrap-up, and those are coming, it's just that it's been so crazy that I haven't had time to film those. I thought I would just make this very important but relatively quicker TBR for you and let you know what I'll be reading during October. And one last thing before we get into Victober proper, I am going to be reading one non-Victorian related book because I have to review it for that podcast I keep mentioning, Olive Kittredge by Elizabeth Stroud. This is a short story collection of interconnected short stories, all centered around this small rural village and the figure of Olive Kitteridge. She is not, I think, 100% featured in all of the stories. I saw the adaptation with Frances McDormand and I adored it. I'm very excited about this actually. This is my only non-Victober related read. Okay, now let's get into it. So in case you don't know, Victober is a month-long reading initiative slash readathon hosted by Katie, Kate, and Lucy. I will link their channels down below and in the past it's also been hosted by Angie who is now inactive or on hiatus and I really love her channel as well so I will leave her past Victober announcement down below so you can check her out anyway because she has a lot of great Victober related videos that might inspire you as well. So as I said, this is just an initiative urging you to pick up at least one Victober book, but they do have challenges and for the first time in forever, I want to attempt all of them. Also the way they do it is super fun because each host proposes a challenge. They also have a general challenge and a reader challenge. Katie's challenge is read the equivalent of your favorite modern genre. My favorite genre I would say is modern classics as well as essays slash historical nonfiction or maybe biographies. Hello everyone, this is Roxy from the future. The file that contained the section where I talked about this book had a problem and I have to reshoot this and of course I don't have the time to set everything up again. So I'm just going to mention that I want to read some of the critical writings of Oscar Wilde. This is a really old fabulous edition edited by Richard Elman. I spoke about this in my The History Challenge tag, I think. But yeah, I'm very excited. I definitely don't want to rush through this and I don't want to read the whole thing. I might read only Impressions of America because that's usually the one that's published as a standalone. And in fact, I have like a small illustrated standalone edition of that in Spanish, but I don't have it here. So I'm just going to check this out instead. Kate's challenge is read a new to you book by your favorite Victorian author. And we all know this, I am obsessed with Oscar Wilde. So I thought I would pick up one of his plays. From here, I'm going to check out Vera and the Nihilist, which is his first play. It's supposed to be terrible. It's about, I think, Russian philosophers or Russian revolutionaries. It's supposed to be a train wreck, super messy, and I just can't wait. Lucy's challenge is read a collection of letters or a diary. I do have an Oscar Wilde letter collection, but I don't have it here. And although I might be going back to my apartment soon, I don't want to jinx it. And I don't know if October will be the month, quite honestly. So instead I decided to read something that is here and it is a collection of documents. So it counts in my mind. It is kind of watching the rules, but Irish Peacock and Scarlett Marquez or Marquis. The Real Trial of Oscar Wilde by Merlin Holland. In case you don't know, Merlin Holland is Oscar Wilde's grandson and he is one of the greatest and most enthusiastic Oscar Wilde scholars out there and he's written a bunch of books on Oscar Wilde and this one is just an edition of the trial records of both of his trials. So the first one was the trial for libel where Wilde was suing um, his boyfriend's Bozzi's father because he had called him a somdomite. Yes, somdomite. And then his trial for indecent conduct. So I've 
read so much about it but I've never read the record so I'm very excited and I'm also excited to see the commentary that Holland provides for this. And then the reader challenge is to read a book that has been on past Victover TBRs and I was really sad when I heard about that challenge although I think it's a great challenge it's just that Dracula was in so many of my TBRs and I read it earlier this year actually a couple of weeks ago you'll get that in my August September wrap-up forthcoming sometime. I just read it and that was the only book that has been time and time again on my TBR but they did give the possibility to read something that you've always wanted to read or like a book that you keep saying oh I should read that book I should read that book and I do have a book that is actually a bind up of seven of H.G. E. Wells novellas. This book I bought the first time I ever went to New York which might be almost 10 years ago now. So I've owned this for a long time and I still haven't read a single one of these novels. Here I have The Time Machine, The Island of Dr. Moreau, The Invisible Man, The War of the Worlds, The First Man in the Moon, The Food of the Gods, and In the Days of the Comet. I'm inclined to read The Island of Dr. Moreau or The Invisible Man. But if you have another recommendation out of these that you think I should check out, I might prioritize that one. I have never read any H.G. Wells and I think it's time to correct that. I know the plot of The Island of Dr. Moreau, so let me know if I should pick another one. I will try to read one or two. And then the general challenge is to do with what you do while reading. This year's challenge is read while wearing something Victorian or Victorian-ish. I don't know if you know this about me. I used to be a big Lolita enthusiast. I mean, I still like them. I just don't actively follow like Lolita accounts or Lolita fashion and fashion shows, but I used to as a teen. And actually one of my prom dresses is a gothic Lolita dress and I have the corset, I have the um, choker and a little hat and the gloves. So I don't think I'll put all of that on for Victover, but you know, I have a bunch of items to take my pick from. So those are the challenges. Now I have other Victorian books that I want to read. I have another H.G. Wells, Asleep Under the Microscope. I really want to read this because it's tiny and I'm trying to read as many of these little books as I can, of the ones I have, of course. I also want to read Agnes Grey that was on my birthday haul and I bought it explicitly to read it on Victover just because I really want to read some Anne Bronte. I think she might be amazing, so I, I need to read her. Then I am going to be reading The Hound of the Baskervilles by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Yes, this is another volume, volume number two on my Sherlock Holmes bind up. Of course, I'm body reading this. We're actually sticking to the novels for now, which works perfectly for me because I hadn't read any of them. I am not sure I'm going to get to this, but I think it's high time I reread The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde, of course. This, I am not sure which edition is. I've read a couple. I need to buy the original manuscript uncensored one. It's by Princeton Press, I think they put it together, and so it's a bit pricey, but I'm eventually going to get that and read that one. Anyways, I really like this edition. It's a Barnes & Noble Flexi Bound. In case you don't know what this is about, it's about a young man who's beautiful and who has a portrait done by a painter who's in love with him. He takes the portrait because he realizes that the portrait will not grow old and he will. And so in a very subconscious way, he strikes a bargain and the portrait will grow old and bear the mark of his sins and he will never age. It's very decadent, it's very interesting, it's also very funny, but it's also intense. And it's one of my favorite books ever. I've reread it a bunch of times, but it's been a while, so I'm excited. Then two books that are not technically Victorian, because they are not by British authors, bear with me. So I want to try and get to Madame Bovary by Gustave Flaubert and this is the translation by Lydia Davis which is why I bought this edition which has the ugliest penguin cover I've ever seen. I hate it. I am already a little iffy with covers that have real people. I think it can work but it's complicated. But this one I just really need really hate. But I got it because I really wanted to read the Lydia Davis translation. So you see, I am not completely superficial when it comes to covers. You know, it's a French classic. This actually popped up in a list of Victorian books. I think because it's interesting to see the same period through different eyes, if that makes sense. Then I also talked about this on my June slash birthday book haul, War and Peace 
by Lev Tolstoy. This was translated by Constance Garnett and I've already talked about her in my wrap-up where I talk about Anna Karenina and basically she was a Victorian translator and she translated a bunch of Russian classic authors including Chekhov and Dostoevsky and yeah I'm just very interested in reading her translation. I really enjoyed her Anna Karenina translation. I don't know what this is about Honestly, I assume it's about a type of war. Yeah, will there be peace? For some reason, I don't think so. What I know about it is that it has a lot of French passages. I'm not sure if they will be translated. Although in my edition of Anna Karenina, they were translated and they were translated as footnotes. So it was really easy to navigate. So let's see. I think this super counts. I think highlighting the work of a superstar Victorian women translator is incredible and important so i'm very excited if you want to read something by her for victober maybe check out short stories might be a good option if you don't want to commit to an entire novel they are probably all public domain so you can find them online and finally i have non-victorian books about Victorian things or related. So the one that's not as related is Gimson's Kings and Queens Brief Lives of the Monarch by Andrew Gimson. Of course, this spans much, much more than Victorian period, but yeah, um, I've been holding on to this for a while and I really want to know if it's good. You know, I love my collection of biographies, so I think it might be interesting. The flintiest of connections, but I'm fine with it. Um, it's blurred by Boris Johnson. Then I have a book that is very related and it's called Empire. This is an edition in Spanish, that's why um, it has so many other words that are not Empire. By Niall Ferguson, I got this on sale and I had to run to get it but I wanted to because they had like two copies left and it was like a super great price. That was like two years ago, I need to read it. Will I get to all of this? I'll try, let me tell you. I also want to finish Making Oscar Wilde. This is kind of a biography but it's focusing specifically on how Oscar Wilde reinvented himself when he went to Oxford and then when he traveled to the US and he did a series of lectures and became really, really famous and then went back as a celebrity to his adopted home country, England. So yeah, as I said, I already started this and it's been super fun and I just need to continue on with it. I have a pair, a fiction, non-fiction pair. That is Remarkable Creatures by Tracy Chevalier, which is a historical fiction novel about Mary Anning, who was a Victorian scientist and fossil collector, and she did a lot of really important work which was then stolen and to complement that experience I've heard amazing things about this one by the way and it will be my first Tracy Chevalier I have a nonfiction book by um, Shelley Emling that I've also heard great things about and it tells the actual story from what little survives of her documents I'm very interested this is a really unrealistic pile and I might start working at it early on although I still have books that I need to read from my other TBRs I don't know how it will go down these are my options this is my TBRM but quite honestly I am going to try to get to as much of this as possible so yeah that is it I hope you like this video if you liked it please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and comment are you participating what are you reading and or are you interested in any of these books that's it see you next time